Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Jalen Hurts, NFL playoffs, wild card. This is a rough one. There's a lot to learn from. There's a lot to be excited about. But somewhere, there's got to be a mixture of this skill set, his improvement, what they're asking him to do, the details getting better, all of those things we are diving into. Lock in. Enjoy. Welcome to the QB School. So before we dive into this video, just a quick reminder that we have revamped, relaunched the Quarterback School Patreon community. Never been cheaper, never been easier to support the channel if you're interested in becoming part of the Quarterback School Patreon community. It is really the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. I sincerely appreciate your support. You get over there, check it out. A lot of the videos will be very similar to this video as far as the detail, the nuance, really kind of the long form creating the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. We talk all sorts of quarterback footwork, reads, coverages, concepts, pass protection, quarterback run game. If that is your jam, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community, and I will sincerely appreciate the support. Get over there. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for checking it out. You can find the link in the description to this video. As for this video, let's get it going. Jalen Hurts, Eagles, Bucks, Wild Card, rough first one up top miss rub when it works it's a great pick when it doesn't it's a missed rub this looks like my man six is a little bit afraid of this contact i don't know afraid let's not necessarily fired up to go in there and put a hip on 45 so what's going on here you know it's man coverage right you went to school with the motion so we're running across here with the motion here. Dialed up perfectly. Nice little pick play. So we're going to come in here. We're going to get in here. And we've got to get in this guy's way. Now, I will say quarterback-wise here, when you're going to run this little quick rail or bullets, normally, if the defender who has him, so eyeball to eyeball here, if he runs under the rub, you want to throw this ball down the field. If he goes over the rub, you want to put it right on him, kind of like it is right here. So let me say that again. Here comes the rub. The defender goes under. You want to go down the field. If the defender goes over, over or gets hit with it, you just want to catch it and put it right on him, kind of like he does here. But make no mistake about it here. That effort on this type of pick rub play, you got to deal with, you know, sometimes you're going to get called on it. That, that does nothing up top. You got to make him make a decision. Tough. And I think Hertz could, if this is the case, you got to hold on to it a tick and put it down the field. But this Bucks front certainly has some dudes who can fly. Third and two, power read. Love the call. Don't love how they're blocking this. So it's fair that it can be both. So power read, what, what are we talking about? Now, depending on how you want to do this, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Usually, you pick a gap to read the defender of. So right here, they're picking this gap. Right? This guy right here is who they're reading. Now, you could make the argument that you don't want to live in this world. Why don't you want to live in this world? Well, it's a lot easier to read defensive ends usually because they're not going to be as fast as DB corner types. When you read it, yeah, they might be longer, but to me, you know, this is where you want to live in the power world, power read world, or really anywhere. When you're going to read, you start reading DBs. They can make these plays where they could in here. You're reading this guy, and he really can take two. So you've got this bash ash action coming to you. You're going to shuffle, shuffle, read this defender. Now, what does it do also? Well, they walk the... The linebacker type out here. No one's blocking here on the backside. So what, what they've got here. Gap hinge. Gap down. Right here. Technically to 45, but he's gone. We're taking an L here. We're trying to wrap for that play side inside linebacker right here. So double team nowhere. No one. And what ends up happening here is we've got the DB that we're reading and the fastest linebacker running free. And we don't have time to read it out, shuffle, shuffle, tackle. So 
to me, how they're blocking this is not the most efficient way. Don't love that. Sometimes third and two, you, you might just call quarterback read and get an extra blocker to the front side. But you can see here, 33 does a really nice job kind of playing tweener this. I think he tackles either one. And that's why you don't want to make a living out of reading the more athletic guy. But again, even if he doesn't make that tackle, I think White comes down the line of scrimmage and makes that tackle. Because technically that's where the double team should go back to. So perfect world here. We're gap hinging. We're gap down. Nobody there. Gap down. Double team back to here. Jay in this thing. And then we are wrapping right here. Well, when he vacates, no one can, you can't double him from there. He's free. So it's just, you know, if I think, you know, in, in a perfect world for me here, if I've got the clicker, we're going to arc this thing. We're going to conflict defender the defensive end. We're then going to get a double team here. And if he goes, you just stay on the double team and eject this cat. Now, easier said than done with Sue, but at least then you can secure it. And it happens a little faster, too. If you go D-gap here, A, B, C, D-gap, it just takes longer. It allows the backside linebacker to come in and make that tackle. So spending a lot of time with this because they do a ridiculously high volume of quarterback runs. Now, I love them. I like them, but you got to block them correctly. Next one, zone read, gone wrong. So now this time, it's less on what I would consider the blocking up front and more on what the hell is happening with the tight end. It looks like he's running an RPO, like he thinks he's going to get the ball on like a throw. So my man Dallas right here has got some interesting plays this game. But when you come out here and run essentially a flat route, that looks to me like you think you're going to get the ball, like you're confused. Like the, the, either there was a play calling mistake or you don't know what you're doing. This is a mental error. Because if he comes out here and we're running zone read, wide zone read here, reading that C-gap player, and we block here, and you arc block and block here, this got a chance now. This has got a really good chance. But because you're running a flat, the guy you should be blocking comes up and makes a damn TFL. So, you know, is this on Jalen Hurts, these first couple? Hell no. So what are we supposed to do here? I mean, what's 88 doing? Bluff flat? I like the bluff and then arc block, but you can't, we can't do this. This isn't. What? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't have words for other than the fact that this is way too many mistakes in the run game, in the quarterback run game to have a chance to win, especially against a really good defense. Third and eight. Now, Hurts here. To me, you know, now we're in exotic looks. This third down, you got to know what the pass protection is. You got to trust it if it's blocked up, and you got to rip it down the field. Because that sale, the number three route here, again to my man 88, it's wide ass open. This is a first down. But it looks like he doesn't trust the protection. And I'm not saying the protection is easy, and I get it. It's easy for me with the clicker. They, they do this bullshit overload front stuff now that everybody thinks is reinventing third down. They're blocked up. Now, it's not easy. Left tackle has to do a nice job of coming off and seeing that. Back has to get over there and block somebody. But hit that back foot. Get up in the pocket. As opposed to it looks like he hits that back foot and has his eyes down right there. Like he's looking at the rush. But he's blocked up. Now, does he know he's blocked up? I don't know. But if he just steps up and rips that sail to the number three, it's a big time play. So again, you can see the back. The back's going up to the line of scrimmage. Where are you guys going? Okay, you're there. Great. Got this. Now they hit you with a little bit of an exotic. There's no doubt about it, pressure-wise. But the offensive line gives you a chance. The back gives you a chance. Step up, right on the hash, throw it. That, that's wide open third down zone coverage. They're going to come with a bunch of exotic zone pressure. There is going to be space in the back end. And this is one of those ones for Hertz really needs to learn from to be able to trust it, get up, 
and let it rip on time because you just don't see that enough from him in this game. Next one, Bash GT. Okay, poor little corner up top this time. That's what happens when you get kicked out. Ba boom. See ya. Again, I'm not necessarily bashing, pun intended, what they're doing quarterback run game wise. They just have to make it look like this more consistently. You, you got to block it up correctly. You can't go out there and put your quarterback in a bag, bad spot. So if we're going to bash GT this thing, we're, we're going to read the C gap defender to our bottom of the screen. Big 98. He comes up the field. That's an easy read. I love it. And this is what he does really well. So again, we talked about it many times on this channel before, but you see the back kind of do these late checks where they move them from the T to the side. It's usually a really nice indicator that you're going to get some sort of RPO. So we're going bash, back away from the run. We're reading the C-gap defender or D-gap defender, whoever, right here. And we're running GT. Okay, so we're going to be gap down, gap down, gap down. We're coming all the way back to the three. And we are kicking. He murders the corner. And then we are wrapping to the play side inside linebacker. And we're good to go. we got a great opportunity here. This thing is made to order. Nice job on the front side by that tight end. Again, pay attention to that tight end in nine. We're going to see that later. It's definitely as good as it ever looks in the poor corner, taking a beating. But that's what the quarterback run game can do. Next, third and seven. Got a nice hook over the ball here. This is great pocket movement. Nice job stepping up, getting the ball out on time. Ball's right up on his face. Again, there is space when they're going to hit you with some sort of zone pressure. They're going to vacate his zone. Great job attacking that area of the field. Now, I will say it's worth paying attention to, for me here, drop-wise. Because this one times out pretty well. But to me, if I'm taking this kind of drop, one, two, three, four, five, up and over, you know, those are those are deep drops. One, two, three, you probably need to do it here just because he's not ready when you're at the top of your drop. Great job finding the space in the zone. Love driving the ball right down the hash, middle of the field. Again, taking advantage of what the defense has given you. Blocking it up, big time third down conversion. Love it. They were in a bunch of rough third down situations all game. Next one, naked, fail. My man 88. You got to get your head, head around. You have to. Looks like he's in a walkthrough and doesn't realize what's going on. This is a nice job from Hertz. If anything, he could bail a little bit more, but he plays this play perfect. You can't make someone turn their head around on this sneak naked or sneak flat, hide flat, whatever you want to say here. So if we're going to fake this way and we're going to run what most people call a sneak or hide flat coming across the other way, the quarterback has the C gap. So they actually bring two here. So when he feels pressure, he comes across and sees anybody. So this guy or the guy outside of him, anybody come up the field, you have to immediately get your eyes back around here. Immediately. It's like almost as soon as you pass the center, you are the hot throw. And not on Hertz. He throws this thing perfect. Pressure right in his face. Get your eyes around. What? I mean, I, I'd be coming unglued. Whew. Almost a really disaster play with a pick there. But that, that play is there. You know, maybe you could make the argument. You know, you see guys like Patrick Mahomes who will sometimes play this as like the wider hot. Again, you know, whether you call this, you know, whether you call this a post wheel, glance wheel, you see a lot of teams run some iteration of this play. But this is made to order. You've got outside here, and you've got the sneak flat. I'm not saying it's an easy play. But the quarterback, when we're evaluating the quarterback, this is perfectly played. 88 just needs to get his eyes around. Come on, bro. He looks like he's like confused that we're playing tackle. Get your head around. Fast. Sense of urgency. Quick. 
That's a touch. Next, fourth and four. Come back to my man 88. Bottom of the screen, nice little deep out. Got him on leverage. Love the timing, love the drop. Love the accuracy of the throw. Big time conversion. Watch the drop, little dovetail at the back. So he's lined up to go to the left, gets it out on time. Again, watch just the leverage down here at the bottom of the screen. So when we're talking about, I think they come back and call this later and it's not a great call, but right here, you've got this inside leverage versus split field coverage. So you're going to be able to come up here and run anything deep out, bench, whatever you want to call it, corner, and you've got the leverage you want because you're running away from that linebacker type inside, especially with press coverage on the outside. So just a really nice call, great execution, great drop from the pocket, getting the ball out on time. This is what you need to see more of, more consistently. Nice job. From the back, one more time, just the timing of it. And again, see how he's lined up? See how he kind of dovetails to our left, his right? So that he's lined up at the back to make that throw to the left. Love it. One of my favorite reps of the game. Next one. Another trusting the pass pro issue. So trust the pass pro, get up and let it rip. This is four verticals. Look at the seam up top, the number two. Read the middle field player. He collapses on the number three special. Rip the seam. And you got to catch the ball. Uh, rough series. But again, trust the pass pro. Right there, that, that little bit at the end. He up. And if he's got his eyes down the field, he's ripping that seam. If he's reading that middle field close player, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. But... He could do it. Again, any iteration of four verticals out of three by one, you're going to get what West Coast people would call a special in a seam. You catch middle field close, you're reading this player. If he takes this special, you're going to think, I'm going to rip this seam. The only way that seam is taken away is if the corner plays two over one. Or one over two, really. If, he, if he's shading this inside, then there's going to be a little collision. But he's not. This is this is easy. These are for the for the standard of this game, the quality of what he's seeing on some of these third downs. This is an easy read. This is big, wide open play. We got we got to hit these. Now again, I think he could do himself a favor by being able to take three, one, two, three, as opposed to three in that hop. And there are a number of plays in this game where. I personally think there's a disconnect between the drop and the concept. So it's either Hurts doing it on his own or the offense not having the what I would consider the correct drop. To me, this is a three-step drop. One, two, three, hitch, throw. Rip the scene right now. As opposed to what whatever he's doing, which is really is a three-step and a shuffle. See that little back that he never crosses over the four or five? So it's one, two, three, shuffle. And then watch his feet come together again at the top. So you can't throw from this position. That's when the ball should be going. So I, I know this is detailed. This might, you might Some people might be thinking, God damn, he's being picky. This is what the position is at this level. Stay right there and throw it. Don't come heel clicky and be late. Now you're late to the seam. So this is the difference between what really could be a touchdown to the seam a big play for sure. And, you know, he, he makes a nice job using his vision, getting it down but and dropping it. But is it where it's supposed to go, where it's designed on this play? No. But come on, bro. Catch the damn ball. 88 and I would have a conversation on the sideline after this. Fourth and 10. Again, to me, wrong drop. You know, this is like, a 14-ish yard hinge. A lot of teams in the league run this. Everywhere I ever was, it was a three-step hitch throw. So again, you know, this is three, shuffle, heel click, late. So what, what am I talking about? This is fourth and ten. These are massive plays. Up like you're running a vertical and you open inside and hinge out. Usually run mirror on both sides. This is a three-step. Take a quick hitch and let it rip. 
throw it with timing, anticipation. Watch his drop. Looks pretty similar to the drop I just said I, I thought was not correct. One, two, three. Shh. At least that looks like four or five as opposed to the shuffle. But now when he goes to throw it, his feet come together. The wide receiver's coming out of it a little bit already. I mean, there's a little bit of anticipation. But I really think if he took a big three at a hitch, he would be early. And see that cushion at the top? That's the cushion you should catch the ball with. It's a nice read. He goes to this offside. Damn. Like, we, we had that. The only reason he's able to recover is because the ball is late. One, two, three, five. Oh, that's tough because that was there. And again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I know that it's Hurts' issue. It's either the offense's issue or the quarterback just doing his own draw. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. It makes a difference. Easy way to support the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. Again, quarterback school Patreon community, relaunched, revamped. Get over there, check it out. In addition, we've got quarterback school courses, another great way to take your football IQ knowledge to the next level. Got a bunch of different topics over there. Quarterback run game, RPOs. We've got tempos. We've got an entire offense. We've got how to beat every coverage. So if you are interested in any of those topics, check out the quarterback school courses. Again, the link is in the description. And then finally, we've got a bunch of free tools as well. All of those can be found in the description as well. Get over there, support the channel, check out the content. I appreciate it. Let's keep this one going. Third and 11. Nice conversion right here to the number three. Running that like beeline inside post. Really shouldn't be there versus this kind of split field coverage with the free safety cheating. So you see 33, the DB type down here. He's cheating to the number three where the ball goes. Really nice pass pro. Great patience. Nice pocket movement. And that's it. This this shouldn't be there. So to me, what you know, whether you call this a post, a beeline, a special up, and then he turns this thing down. And right here, you know, this guy is cheating the number three. You can watch him. To me, this split field coverage. Anytime you get this look, you're normally going to come down here and work here to the singled up wide receiver. Now, you know, unless it's Kelsey, it's not quite as easy. And for me, I don't know if I throw it to 88 the rest of the day. But again, you see him cheat the three. Look at that. No way you should get this. Great job taking advantage of that area of the field, though. Nice job by the wide receiver flattening it out. Big chunk play. One of the few positive big chunk plays on a third and 11. Just rough third downs all day. Next one, interception. This stuff. You know, you're in a two-minute situation, bottom of the screen. He's got him, but because he's kind of in a half bail here, the ball's late. He's moving while he's open, and then he's by the time he gets there, he's late. Now, does he have to bail here? You know, easier for me to say than to do. You know, 14, you know, that's not the pass for all I'm looking for. That's not the matchup I'm looking for if I'm calling plays either, to be honest with you. Don't want my back having to scan across and try to block that guy like that. So I get why he's bailing a little bit. But right there, it's open, and he's just late to see it. So, you know, it's one of those fine lines between you, you got to try to make a play. Now, you obviously can't throw picks in the red zone or in the end zone. But you can see here, it's there, right? We get a little fortunate, guy falls down. Mailbox at the bottom of the screen. He's just late and or either doesn't see the middle field player. And does he have to bail? And is that the matchup we want if we're calling plays and or in charge of the pass protection unit? Hell no. But again, they're all blocked up, right? We're not. Why are we bailing like this? We, we got to trust it. There is a trust issue in this game. The film is evidence of him not being able to stand in there and deal it as consistently as he was probably like. And again, easier for me to say, bro, with a clicker. Next one here, third and eight. This is great playmaking ability. Scramble. He's going to scramble to his left. 
Hit your favorite 88 down here on the bottom. Nice job coming back to the ball. This is a big time just playmaker's play. There's nothing there. Where are you supposed to go with the ball? He's able to get outside the pocket. No, night that away to trust it. It's not there. Time clock, get out, flip your hips, drive it down the field. Great job coming back to the ball. Catch it on the body. But I mean, wh where is he supposed to go with the ball? Where? You tell me. There, there's nowhere to go with the ball. Maybe you check it down faster. You know, I, I will say just fundamentals, technique-wise here at the back. I like when he hits his back foot like that. That that looks good. Just stay there as opposed to coming back up like this. You see, I'm like pop his shoulders. He changes so much of his eye level, his shoulders. It To me, doesn't allow him to get the ball out on time as quickly as he, as you, as we would want the ball. Now, does it matter on this play? No. But just over the course of watching this game, the other thing about this game that I'm not going to show in this video is most of the throws, the completions are screens. I mean, they're, they're screening the hell out of these guys. And not that I don't think it's an important part of the game. I just don't think it's an important part of this video. But third and 10. Again, you know, what's going on with the drop? We're late to the curl. And it feels like I'm, I'm repeating myself because a lot of these drop back passes just feel late to me. And again, this he could be doing exactly what they're asking him to do. And if that's the case, then this offense needs to get better attention to detail as far as what their drops are, their footwork is. But this curl here on a third and long, this a, this a first down in the league. Not a turnover-worthy throw. This is a, you, we, we can make this throw 9 out of 10 times. So let's take big three, hitch, and throw it. And that's it. That's the read. You're welcome. Let it rip. As opposed to three, one, two, three, shuffle. And we're late. Throw it with anticipation. Take a big three. One, two, three, hitch, throw. See him come, see the wide receiver up top coming out of the route already. Now the DB is driving the ball. The safety is driving that throw before the ball's in the air. Now, does he miss a little bit inside too? Yeah. But th this is a this is a first now. That's open. We we can get that all day, every day. Again, only a few people know the answer to whether they're asking him to do this or this is how he does his five-step drop. And if it's a five-step drop, to me, it's late. So again, tough. Next one, fourth and three, interception. You know, this is a, this is a bad call. I don't really have a problem. You know, it's fourth down. You, you got to throw it. You know, he obviously doesn't throw it exactly where he wants. He, he kind of unnecessarily bails here, but the time clock is going because it's, you know, he's hanging in the pocket for so long. Again, look at this look, exotic look. They bring five, got it blocked up. He brings himself to issues, but I get it why you would. You're hanging back there. Your time clock goes off. You think you've got that throw, and that's a really nice play defensively. Yeah, all those things can be true. And let's acknowledge the fact that we're running mirrored routes into a bad look defensively. So what am I talking about? It was earlier in the game. I don't know if it was, I think it was the fourth and four earlier in the game where they ran that deep out down here. And I was like, oh, that's a great call because of the leverage here. He's got that inside leverage and it was tight press man coverage. Remember, and we had all this space to be able to attack here. Well, now look at the difference here. When we're going to play some iteration of closed zone. Well, now you don't like it. Why? Because he's going to run this thing right into an outside leverage defender. So we're, you, you can't make that throw that you just made. And then because it's mirrored, you got the same thing on both sides. You know, mirrored, the, it's not mini camp one. Let, let's get away from the mirrored concepts. And give ourselves a full field chance. You know, what, where are you supposed to go with the ball? Where would you like him to throw it? 
you know, if on the backside you have like a, an in by that number two, you got a chance. But we're running mirrored concepts. Got to try to make a play. Okay. To me, of all the things that went sideways, you know, th this one is a combination of a poor call and, you know, bailing, getting himself into trouble here a little bit, but I got no real problem with it. You got to try to make a play on a fourth and four, fourth and three situation. So next, I think we're down at this point, 31 nothing, 31 nothing. We're running Bash GT. Now watch the tight end down here at the bottom of the screen. Right, we, we can't have that. So again, 31 nothing running your quarterback. Okay. We're running Bash GT. Already talked about it a few times here. There's the Bash back away. We're going to read right here what I would consider the C or the D gap defender. We're going to go theoretically. <laughs> Gap down. We take a massive L right here. Okay, we're going to go back, down, here. We're going to kick out. And we are going to wrap. And that's it. This is... I like this. As long as this guy wins like you did the last time. If you're... You, you can't... Uh, you know. It's the nicest way to put this. Uh, I'm not running my quarterback if we can't hold the edge better than this this is unacceptable and again you know 33 the db type he's not going to get blown up every single time this time he comes in there lowers his shoulder gets around the tack the pulling guard but damn we're taking l's like that from tight end he's turning into tight end school Especially with the score. I'm not doing that again. Again, you know, this hurts it. What's hurt supposed to do? So let, let, let's keep it real here with this. We're talking about quarterback evaluation, quarterback play. He plays this thing perfect. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> In fact, I'd argue that he does a decent job not getting hit by multiple guys, not getting hurt there. Damn. Third and 13. Down 31 nothing. They hit us with zero, which in and of itself is kind of a Middle finger move, but whatever. It's the NFL. Play calling wise here. Where is he supposed to go with the ball? There is no hot. There is no side adjust. There's no, you know, they, they've got us here. They're bringing one plus. That's how guys get hurt. 31 nothing. We don't have a hot side adjust. This is zero. Okay, so you can see these guys communicating here. Pressure. Pressure, he comes, he's uncovered. Now, one of them obviously has the back, but this is what it is. You have to have some sort of hot side adjust. You have to. We we can't do this. When we have open edges like this and they bring seven, we, we've got to have something. So either this guy needs to be able to break something off or we have to break something off here. we got to have a flat, hot, we have to have something. This is unacceptable to do to a quarterback. You know, the, the first thing I would always ask on any play, what, what's our zero option? Because when you get stuck like this, this is how people get hurt. Where is he supposed to go with the ball? Where? You, you want to coach quarterbacks? You want to come up with scheme? Where? Give him an option or he's not going to have a chance to be su successful. No one is. But he's got enough time there. One, two, three, four, five. If we had something, we could take a shot. We'd have a real good chance. Instead, we're holding it. We're getting hit while we're throwing. And we're really fortunate to come out of this thing unscathed. Next one down here to the bottom of the screen. This is a missed back shoulder opportunity for me. Again, you know, the accuracy down the field certainly not consistent this to me is one of the, the more glaring ones because it's such a wide miss like this is a touchdown or at least a touchdown opportunity now i'm going to be picky and say whatever this drop is this isn't the drop okay and what i mean by that is 
one, two, three, four, five, drifting. Okay, maybe right there, that could be the drop. But then let's keep our feet like that. Keep a good base, as opposed to this. Coming heel clicky, bouncing up and down. Losing our base, heel clicky. Let this in go. There's, there's nobody there. The DB has his back turned. Right here. This is a big time wide receiver with a great catch radius. You put it anywhere that he can catch it, it's a touchdown. I'm not saying, this is not the easiest throw in the world. It really, it isn't. But it's not this hard either. It's not this wide of a miss. This is missing by yards. I mean, he doesn't even put his hands up at the end. It's so far away. We, we got to be able to give ourselves a better shot than that. And I think it starts with the, the footwork in the pocket. But that's the right decision, just the wrong ball. Next one, third and four, touchdown. For as much as I've been complaining about the run blocking, pass blocking, schemes, play calling, this is a really nice one. Even better effort from the back here. You know, great job finishing, way better than his pass protection. Great balance at the end of this thing. Pretty sure they have a defensive screw up as far as where 49 is going, but not going to apologize for their mistake. So what am I talking about here scheme wise? We're going to get the, anytime you get the combination of, this is an old school iteration of either Texas or short post for me, where you get this out the backfield, like you're running a flat and then come back when you tether that with two verticals here. So I think he comes out. And then this is the one that I really love with the shallow from the number one. So when you get this shallow from the number one, if there's anybody, if, if there's any type of zone defender, which is right here, he's going to in, innately go with that. And what it does is it creates a bigger window for this Texas fan short post. So just a really nice design here. As we'll give some flowers when they're due. You can see again, they've got two zone defenders right over the ball. That's not what they want. But again, that's what that shallow does to 49. Nice job. Again, you know, garbage time touchdown, but worth noting the fact that he, he certainly can play from within the pocket. You know, a no-hitch throw here. One, two, three, four, five. You know, to me, again, you know, not, not that drop with this play, but maybe let's hope that that's how they're teaching it. I just think it's not correct. And that's not the end of the world if I disagree with them. Two-point conversion here to close this thing out. And this is just, I think, him at his best making plays outside the pocket. You know, really, I think he thinks he's going to score there. 45 is just that fast to close the door. He's got the ability to pull up and throw it away from the near defender. I mean, that, he's, we're making that throw and catch, but we're missing the back shoulder by 10 yards. Not 10 yards. One yard, two yards. That's a great throw. That's a big time play getting hit. The playmaking ability, the speed that he shows here and the ability to pull up the decision making. So there's nowhere to go. Again, look up top guys at this pick rub play. Whoever's teaching this up there is just not good enough, man. You gotta go in there and what you wanna do is you want to set this thing right in front of this guy and if he goes behind him, you want to stick your rear out and make him bubble even around that like you're boxing him out in at the wreck. Come in there and set it. And then if he goes around it, stick your rear. You can't come out there like you're getting held up at a bank. I get why you have your hands up so you don't get a, a pick rub call. But like, and you're trying to sell the pass. But get in there and sell the pass like that before, not after he runs by you. Like that's a terrible pick. It's so, it's just bad football frustrating but this is great playmaking ability from the quarterback and I love the fact that he pulls up gets a great base makes a great throw that's just those are the type of pop plays that when we could get interwoven with more consistency from within the pocket with the footwork the timing what they're asking him to do then he's got a chance to be really good so that is a wrap Jalen Hurts playoffs rough one rough run really comprehensively as an offense 
Uh, my overarching take was that they're asking him to maybe do a little bit too much as far as what they're doing in the quarterback run game, even the RPO screen world. Now, some of the screens do alleviate some pressure, but I would love to see just a little bit maybe of some plays where he can just kind of almost like take off, whether it's simple handoffs, whether it's simple drop back, throw it to an open guy on time in rhythm. There's too much for me either a lack of trust from his standpoint, her standpoint, trusting the protection in some of these drop back things. The drops don't necessarily time out. To me, I think it's just an overall, what I would consider or categorize as almost like a lack of detail for a drop back precision passing game on Sundays. And so what that looks like moving forward, I would expect big jumps right out the gate, but I would also expect maybe to make things a little bit easier for him. Let's call some just normal quarterback runs if we're going to run him. It doesn't always have to be a read. It doesn't always have to be, you know, bash GT, power read, zone read. Let's just, hey, take the snap and go be you. Because he certainly has got some unbelievable playmaking skills. You just need to interweave that into a easier game plan for him to execute. It's not the fact that I don't think he can do it. I just think that what they're asking him to do when you turn on the film, at least in this game, looked like it was too much and it looked like he didn't always have the answers whether it's you know hey they're zeroing us we need to get the ball out of our hand hey let's just get an easier throw in the drop back game they certainly helped him with the screens that i didn't necessarily show in this video but i just felt like there were better ways to help a quarterback be successful than what they necessarily called and or helped around him with the other perimeter playmakers so Lots to dive into. That was a long one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know who you want to see next. I sincerely appreciate it. I will see you next time. Have a good one.